Tag me in podcast. Back again with another episode. You are joined by myself, Ola. And also Anton. Yes. And in the studio, we have a young special guest. His name is Ezekiel. And he is a transformational speaker. Not no motivational. No, 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 no. We're leveling up. We're not motivating. We're transforming. Transformational. And Ola's you know what? Right oh, come on. You got, you got to hype up. You know what? Let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to have transformational. I'm going to hand it over. Ezekiel, I want you to introduce yourself. Tell us what you're about, why you're about transformation. Because some people are here like, I don't even know what that is. Mm. All right, cool. So, boom. My name is ETS. My name is Ezekiel Johnson. And the reason why I decided to become a transformational speaker, it all started out from motivational speaking. And I realized that motivation... Nah, that's not the real stuff. You need to mess with the big boy <laughs> stuff. Come on. Because you come and get motivated, and then when you leave, you're demotivated. Mm. You come and get motivated, and then when you leave, you're demotivated motivated again. So it's like it's like a drug. It's like an opium. Something that you don't even clock is a drug. So I decided, no, motivation is not enough. If I really want to impact this world, if I really want these young people to change, these people to change, they need to be transformed. So I was like, no, nah, what we need to do is transform people's mindset, transform people's lives. Because when you're transformed and you're demotivated, you're on a completely different level. Because now your transformed state is higher than the base level that you had before. So mm. when you're demotivated and it's your off day, your off day will be another person's on day. So that's the whole point. So when you're on, that's when we see something different. Mm. That's when we see flames. And that's basically the reason why I decided to become a transformational speaker. Energy. Wait. Come on. <laughs> oh my From days. jump. <laughs> Man just went. I'm, you know what? I'm scared to use the word motivated. You, know? Bob, you, no, you, can't, you can't not use that around ETS. Do you know what he said? He was like, listen, on your day off, like when you haven't got motivation, you're still going to be better than the rest mm. who wow. ain't on that level because you ain't transformed. You. Oh, levels. I, I ain't heard it like that before. There's levels to this. And you know what? Just to give everyone a little background and to... How I met Ezekiel ETS. So this was at the BYP event, um, Black Young Professionals. And then we were there. It was the main stage, wasn't it? Yeah. Main stage. And then I remember they had Georgia Poet go on. Amazing, amazing performance. Um, then Legendary Carl. Carl jumps on stage. I'm like, that's my guy. <laughs> we had this guy on our podcast. I'm like, I'm loving his energy. Yeah, Carl's talking about... Um, thinking about if you were on stage and thinking about what your legacy would be. If you were called on stage, what would you be called on stage for? Um, what would you do for, the, what are you going to do for the community? And try to get everyone into that mind frame and that mindset. And I was like, yeah, he's on fire. And then as part of that, he asked that question of who who's open to kind of speaking up and putting themselves out there in terms of saying what it would be for them. I remember people kind of stood up, answered the question. So I just remember this guy at the front standing up and I just thought, the first thing that came to my mind was, how old is this brother? Because I remember this is working professional. So most people who have graduated, been to university um, and in their working career. So we're talking 21, 22 upwards. And I remember just hearing this voice thinking, this is a very young voice. And I looked over and then this guy was just talking. And I'm like, who is this guy? And I remember Carl just saying, watch out for this guy. Look out for this guy. And I remember I grabbed you after and I was like, bro what are you about and we kind of got to speaking and then i just saw it i just saw the light i was like this guy's young but this guy's on job in the next three four five however many years this guy will be at that level where a lot of people won't reach until their mid 30s late 40s kind of thing and i'm like this guy is on job and then yeah just speaking to you and as you said you mentioned transformational speaker and again it isn't something that is widely known it's usually all these motivational speakers gary v whoever else you talk about mm. what needs to be done les brown and you mentioned that point which is great because i've heard um uh forgotten what's this guy the guy that claps oh um oh, big, what, you know, tony robbins tony robbins yeah. and he mentioned a point as well and that how sometimes motivational speaking and speech is is like having a shower and that you need it some people need it every day or but you need it on a regular basis mm. and i like the fact that you've come from that transformational angle of this is different we're transforming everything you do everything you the way you live and it's so important um on that point how do you transform someone 
because everyone's different and everyone's mm. definition of transformation is different. Mm. Say one of your brethren is like, easy, yes, I need to be transformed. How are you doing it? It all stems from your mindset. So like, what do you put into your mindset? What do you watch? What do you listen to? The mm. friends that you have? Because when your mindset is transformed, then your life is transformed. And I'll always say this, it all stems from how well you know your value. Do you understand the fact that you're a king? Do you understand the fact that you're a queen? Because when you come to the realization that you're a king and you're a queen, that your actions will change. Your mindset will change because you see a king doesn't just step like a commoner. A king Jeez. doesn't move like a commoner. A king has his Come own on. type of drip. And Ooh. that's the mindset that like, every young person ah. needs to have. And that's how you're transformed. When you come to that realization, I came to that realization, whoa, I'm a king. So I talk like a king. I walk like a king. Wherever I step to, they see a king. And the king has presence. And when you transform your mindset like that, then your life will change. So yeah, it's all about knowing your value. That's a mad... How do you... At what stage did you come to that kind of realisation of knowing your value and your king? Was it... Because I don't really want to talk about your age too much. I don't know if you're someone that wants to publicly like, let people know your age because I don't mm. know if age really matters in your field. Mm. But at the same time, at what point would you like, you know what, I'm a king. This is my value. I'm going to walk like a king. I'm going to speak like a king. I would say it has to be, I think... I was 16 at this time. And then it has to be when I gave my life to Christ. Mm. I'll always say this. Because before I was so insecure, I was so small, so fat. Then I gave my life to Christ. And then I realized, wait, since God is the King of Kings, since God is the Lord of Lords and the God of Gods, that means we are kings. Because to be a King of Kings, you have to be a King of Kings. Mm. Since he is God... That means I am a God, but not the God. Let's not get it twisted. <laughs> I am a God. Because let's put it into perspective. Like a king. Let's say King Patrick. King Patrick has a child. And now that child has royal blood. And that child is born into royalty. And that child is a prince. The same aspect and principle is with God. God has children. We are his children. And we are automatically gods. Now you said, when did I understand this? I'll have to say I understood this probably around... Yeah, 12, 6 form time, like, while I was doing ETS, while I was doing it, I didn't know my value as much mm -hmm. as I knew now because it came from experience and came from knowing the fact that, hold on, I'm a king. Like, I sat down, I was like, wait, I'm actually a king. Like, I'm literally a it. king. Yeah, like, I sat down, I was like, whoa. <laughs> where's, where's my crown? Where's my crown? <laughs> That's, what That's what I was saying. I was like, whoa. So then I realized that, ah, oh, no, nah, let me walk like a king. Let me talk like a king. Let me be a king. A king mm -hmm. is like me. Let me not even say like a king. The king is me. So I decided to adopt that value and adopt it and accept it. Then when I did that, it was like, yeah, everything just changed. My life just changed. Presence follows me. Everything follows me. Because you need to understand your value. It all stems from understanding your value. Mm -hmm. Those people that are successful, those people that are up there, they know their value. They like let me put it into perspective, like Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Mm. You see, Boohoo doesn't put value on him, but he puts the value in Boohoo. That's why they come out to him and reach out for him. And that's the level that we need to get to. We shouldn't search for the clothes to put the value on us. We put the value on the clothes. And when you mm. come to that realization that wherever you go, you put the value in it, then Everything will change. So, on, yeah. on this point of values, how do you... So say, let me use myself as an example. Say I didn't know what my values were, what I cared about. Mm. How would I get to the point of, this is my value, that's my value. I will walk like a king. How, before I even get to that point of being a king and looking for the crown, yeah. how, how do I get to a point of thinking what my values are? Do I just write things I like down? Or like, how did you... How do I get there? How do you get there? Your friends play a part in it. Because you are the average of your friends. Come on, five. Yeah, that's yeah, what we, we, we say that. Yeah. <laughs> You're the, the time. average of your five closest yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah. All the time. So, if your friends don't know your value, I mean, if your friends don't know their value, your friends don't know how to walk, how to talk, then the same is going to happen to you. 
That's why you're going to have to level up and search out for the friends. Successful people search for their friends. You need to seek out people of value. Seek out people that know themselves and talk to them. Ask them. And you need to come to the realization of what are your gifts, what are your talents. Like, write down what you're good at. Write down everything that you're talented at. And then when you realize that these are gifts, master the gifts. Because mm. out of mastering the gift and cultivating the gift, value will come. Presence will come. So I understood how valuable I am when I understood my speaking gift. And I understood, wait, not everyone can speak like me. Mm. Not everyone can talk like me. And then value just stemmed out of it. So I'll say, yeah, the people that you spend your time with, it really has an impact. Like Some people think it doesn't have an impact. Trust me. It, definitely does. it has an impact on you. And getting a mentor also helps as well. Yeah. Because a mentor sees the light in you that you don't even see yourself. Mm. And when like they reveal things to you, like my mentor Carl, he reveals things to me. He's like, you know, like you're amazing. You know, you're valuable. I'm sitting here like, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's like, but when you get someone that's like ahead of you, they can see potential and they can see light. Mm. So I'll say, yeah, getting a mentor also helps as well. That, that's man. crazy man because yeah i never really thought about getting a mentor no i thought about it but in that mm. context of someone who can look at you see your greatness mm. see where you might need to improve and just see how you can kind of navigate because like you said they've traveled that road mm. before you so they know what the dangers are it's like if someone goes into the jungle if i take the map from someone who's been there before they can say, look, there's some snakes over there. Yeah. There's a couple rats over there. Yeah. Be careful of the saber-toothed tigers that way. Mm. This is the route I took. You can go about your journey. If you want my guidance, it's there. So I think it's, it's definitely sort of something important to, to think about. One thing I did want to ask, okay, so you're a transformational speaker. Mm. Um, and I know the way it works is people will like, watch your videos and get inspired, aspire, that sort of thing. Who has been that for you? So who do you watch and have watched that you're like, yeah, this person's on <laughs> Obviously, we, got, we know Carl Canardu. He's a legend. We've had him, we've had him on the podcast. He's an ama- I love everything he does. He's an amazing guy. But who else do you kind of look out in the world to and say, I rate this person? I rate this person. I would say people like Mars Monroe, people like E.T., definitely. People like Gary V. I rate <laughs> Gotta work. (laughs) Yeah, all the time. Those are the type of people that I watch. And even my friend, my close, close brother, um, Anthony, people like him, like when I watch him, the way he is, how he humbles himself, I'm like, Mm. yeah, this is something that I need. This is something that I need to take. And even my mum, when I watch her, the way she speaks, the way she talks, I'm like, yeah, this is something that I need. Yes, yes. I like that. I like, you know, I like, I respect the fact that you brought it back home. Mm. You didn't just say, or these super Les Brown, Tony Robbins, or these super famous people, you're like, no, my brethren, Anthony. Yeah. M- Mumsy. Like, you're this in a circle. Yeah, in a, the these are your, your oh. closely related to. Your yeah. everyday people. Because, like, I think a lot of it does stem from home. So you saying that you look at your mum and you're like, wow, there's certain characteristics, there's qualities in her that you want to do right by her and mm. also enhance or even take on those characteristics, making sure that you're still fulfilling your title. Because mm. I know when she had you, she's raising a king. Yeah, and definitely. You, you know, it's that value thing that you're talking about. Like, I think that realisation that sometimes our parents have this whole wish that they're raising a, a princess, a prince, mm. a queen, a king. And the real question comes from, are you actually living up to that? Not to their standards, but do you feel like a king? Mm. Have you got that value? So are you able to enter into a room and be like, not, I guess there's this borderline of arrogance and cockiness, yeah. but there's that belief of like, I walk, I talk like a king. I mm-hmm. walk, I smile, I do whatever like a queen. Mm-hmm. I think that's powerful. It's like this whole mindset thing that you're talking about. It's that like this belief system because I, I guess this whole transformation thing, it's an endless thing that's going to happen in life. You don't transform. So the person I was two weeks ago, I have transformed, but then I'm going to transform again Mm. and again Mm. and again. The one question that I've got is, what's the key difference between a motivational speaker and a transformational speaker? The key difference? I would say the key difference is that a motivational speaker would just dish out motivation. They won't really give you like the practical steps Mm. to take. But a transformational speaker would give you the practical steps to take. 
because out of taking action, transformation comes. So like people like Eric Thomas, people like Gary V, I wouldn't really call them motivational speakers. I will call them transformational speakers. Because when you listen to them, you take their advice, you're actually transformed and you're actually on a different level. Like I was speaking to you earlier. Yeah. You said that you're like, you listen to Eric Thompson and he got you through uni. university. Mm. Yeah, that's Crazy. transformation. Yeah. That's transforming you to level up, to take on the trials and obstacles of university. So I'll say, yeah, that's it, the practical steps. That's the transformational aspect. Because I think it's definitely one of those things where I'm a sucker for motivational speeches on youtube <laughs> they're 30 minutes long i can listen to them in the morning all different titles the i'm back, like yes the how bad music, you want yeah. it yes you want it bad as you want to breathe come on yes i want it but you're right there's this element where you need the actionable steps yeah. you need to be hit with those questions and they also need to create the space that allows you to think and think about what you need to do next mm. so it's like you want it bad how bad do you want it write down five things that you want to change today come back to me in two weeks. Those sort of action yeah. steps because that's when you do transformation. Like people can shout at you. People can be like, you can do it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. But if you've got a coach and like you were saying about a mentor, someone who's looking at you and reviewing your 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 good, mm. your bad, and they're saying, all right, cool, you did five sets like this, but I know you can do six. Next time what we're going to do is we're going to pause two seconds here. Yeah. That yeah. That's the bit that you're like, oh yeah. shit. Mm. And you start seeing your progress. And you're like, you remember two weeks ago when you could only do five? Now you could do eight. Yeah. Am I doing my job? Yeah, you are. All right, cool. Let's keep on moving. Yeah. That's the transformational aspect. It's like, say you have a star. There's a star that you need to get to. Like, motivation to me is like, oh, there's the star. I show <laughs> you the star. Yeah. But the transformation, uh, transformational aspect to me is like, here's the star. Here's the compass. Here's the map. There you go, get to the start. Yeah. I've given you the tools yeah. to get to the start. I'm not just telling you that there's a start there. Because I feel like a lot of people, and young people included, like we need the practical steps. Yeah, no one tells you to get a mentor at 17. Mm. No one tells you to go and get LinkedIn at 17. No one tells you to go to events at 17. Yeah. And that's the whole transformational aspect. And because I'm 17, it's like, I shouldn't just be the only one that's entitled to these things. I want to see every young person with these things. I want to see everyone winning because yes. there's a lot of space on this earth for everyone to be winning. Yeah, I'm so I just want to see everyone on a different you. level. And that's so it's what that awareness of is. knowing what opportunities are there. Yeah. Because I guess beforehand you didn't know about certain things. You didn't know that yeah. at 17, I can actually go to an event and speak Yeah. yeah. and was, make my, my, my voice heard to what is the, the the black young professional kind of conference, which was what, 89 pounds, professional people, speakers, yeah. full yeah. day on. I didn't like, even know what it was. Like, the <laughs> car was just like, ah, oh, do you want to come? I'm like, sure, why not? I'm free. And then my friend, <laughs> Set you up. Said, yeah, literally, <laughs> that's the thing about a mentor. A mentor opens hidden doors. That's a door I can't see. He can see, open it for me. So even my friend hit me up, my friend James, you're like, Hey, you in BYP? I was like, yeah, so what? He's like, he showed me the price. Yeah. He showed me the price of the ticket with a discount. I was like, mm. and then you saw how serious it was, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Trust me, that those type of events are levels. And like you said, mm. it's just so valuable. And I'm glad that Carl mentioned that point about being able to add value mm. as a, a speaker or a coach or a mentor. And obviously, when you think about mentorship or coaches, they're all in like different contexts. So you've got sports, business, whatever. Mm. Would you say you're like more generic? Or like how would you describe yourself if you could? Like, are you for everyone? Am I for everyone? I would say it depends who you are. Because like some people would accept me, some people wouldn't. Like Eric Thompson, not everyone likes Eric Thompson. So you go to Tony Robertson. Mm. So it's like the whole point of like me is to be a part of the ecosystem. And what I mean by ecosystem is like, it's a collective team. So like Eric Thompson, if you don't like Eric Thompson, you could go to Tony Robinson, but both mm -hmm. of them are on, and both of them know what they're talking about. Yeah. Yes. But they have their own type of people that they cater to. And that's what it is. If I can cater to you, then glory to God. If I can't, then it's fine. Go to someone else, get transformed. You're still winning. That's all you care you know about. What? As long as someone's winning. Yeah. yeah. It's not about me because I'm not the only one that has a speaking gift. I'm not the only one that can speak. It's like singing. Beyonce is not the only peak singer. There's Adele, there's Rihanna, there's um, my girl Miriam, my girl Veranda. Jeez, like, <laughs> there are other yeah, people yeah. that can sing. Yeah, so my guy Ahmed. <laughs> come on, come on. Now, I'm loving that. But you know, it's so true. And you mentioned the point about ecosystem and mm. thinking about how, yeah, there is that Beyonce. 
she's got her beehive, but not everyone might listen to that. Yeah. You've got people like Adele who might not necessarily like Beyonce. And it's just, I think it's important that everyone is aware that there's enough for everyone. Yeah, that's there's a good. seat for everyone at the table mm. and there is enough for all of us to eat and eat plenty for. Mm. And I think that's definitely a mindset I think that needs to be pushed is that people need to have that mindset of abundance. Yeah. So a lot of people, I think, are walking around with this mindset of scarcity. If I win, that means you have to lose. No, 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 no. We can all win. Yeah. We can all be winners. We can all have a seat at the table. There's enough for all of us I'm to saying, have do you know what seconds I'm thinking? and thirds. Mm. Like this whole same table thing. There's mm. different tables. And there's there you even go. There yeah. you go. There's you more can than create one. your own table and slowly other people will Everyone come join. Come in. <laughs> like joy. And I think that's, that's, that's definitely something. And I'm glad you also mentioned the point about the younger generation. Mm. I feel like to a certain degree, they're sort of neglected. Like there's a lot less being spent on like clubs and and programs for these young children. And Definitely. I feel like that's where sometimes people go kind of like a bit wayward or off the rails or they mm. just lack a lot of these initiatives. Mm. But you mentioned that just knowing that these things are available, knowing that you can go to certain events after school or at the weekend, knowing that there are programs available for you to go to, to kind of build on your CV and different skills and mm. having access to LinkedIn. And I'm glad that you're kind of pushing this because so many people just are not aware of what's available. Mm. But by then just seeing it, like if you just mention a book, five people read it, that could have <laughs> completely changed. Like there are books yeah. that genuinely we'll I've read that have, that have changed the trajectory of the way I handle money, my yeah. emotions, my relationships. And it's like, I learned this from someone. Mm. And if you're that person in that position to just tell someone, look, you can do this, you can read that. Mm. I think it's so powerful. It just it's shows so how powerful. connected we all can be and how important it is to share like your lessons and what you're up to in a sense so if i'm reading a certain book and i'm finding key lessons in it share it there's nothing wrong with that because someone could mm. benefit from it but then i was going to go back to a point that Ola was talking about in terms of like opportunities and how there's not a number of initiatives out there nowadays or there's a reduction growing up there were some initiative in school so there was once upon a time like this business one where they gave us 250 to start up a small business back in like secondary school and your journey kind of started with an initiative for the Jack Petri Award, didn't it? Yeah, Jack Petri. Do you want to like talk about that initiative <laughs> and how it kind of like that opportunity? You mm. saw it. Yeah. It wasn't really for you. Yeah. Or offered to you, but you still went for it. Speaking about opportunities, I love the fact that you pointed out that. What I'll say about opportunities, I always say this: ask for forgiveness rather than for permission. Wait. Come on, like, this guy just come with that. Hey, hey, plug the Insta right come now. Come on, I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> plug the Insta and then we go back. You can repeat that What's same line. Insta? My Insta is I am underscore ETS. Right. I repeat, I am underscore ETS. And what come was that on, line that you just said? don't ask for permission. I mean, ask for forgiveness yeah. instead of for permission. Yeah. All right. the time, yes, because it's like. There's only two answers you'll get in this world, regardless. It's either yes or no. Mm -hmm. If you say yes, good. If you say no, okay. Now I know where I stand. So I'd rather go out and just ask. Just ask. Instead of being like, uh, I don't know if I should ask. Mm. Maybe maybe they won't like me asking. I just go out and ask. And going on to Jack, the Jack Petri, basically what happened was it was like a Jack Petri award in my school. Shout out St. Joseph's, my secondary school. <laughs> So it was at my school and then it was only like for the top sets that can do the Jack Picture Award. They had like three weeks to prepare. And then obviously I just found out about the speaking Jack Picture on the day. Mm. And luckily, not even luckily, fortunately, me and my English teacher, the head of English, we were good friends. So I went up to her. I was like, oh, yeah, that's a key thing. Always be respectful to everyone because you never know who in this world you need. So always show everyone respect. Always show everyone kindness. Not everyone has to like you, but just don't give people a reason to not like you. Mm. And that's what happened. So I went up to her. I asked, ah, uh, madam, can I like participate? And she was like, yeah, sure, you can go on. And then she just fast chat to me. So I went on here. Mind you, everyone had time to prepare. So I came on, just thought of a speech on the spot. And I was like, um, boom. Then I ended up beating everyone in like the top two sets. That must hurt people so <laughs> yeah. right now. Just like that. <laughs> like, like, I, pre I prepared. <laughs> yeah, it's my gift. Like, come on, it's my gift. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be the best that's ever used it. Come on. So it's like, I just ended up beating them. It went to the assembly. Ended up beating everyone in the assembly. And then it went to the regionals. And then I realized, wow, I have a gift. Like, 
even one girl told me, um, because she asked me, how do you like make speeches? I said, oh, you know, I don't write speeches down. Then she looked at me, she's like, you don't write speeches down. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I just think of a word, make a whole speech around it. Well, Off I look the at dome. Something. Yeah, I make a whole speech around it. And she looked at me as if I was crazy. <laughs> and then Good I, luck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> literally. But then I was like, oh, wow, this is a gift. That's when I clocked that not everyone could do this. And then I pour it to church and then I pour it everywhere around me. And then they must have asked me a question. Oh, what should like your social media platforms? Then I was like, man, just a Snapchat still. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's a Snapchat thing. And then my friend Anthony, that yeah, my brother Anthony, who's like, ah, oh, you know, you need to get serious about the social media thing because like people are gonna keep asking you, where's your social media? Yeah. So I was like, ah, oh, cool. So he helped me. We made the Instagram page. And then, yeah, from there, the rest is just history. So we've just been doing it for a year now. We've been elevating progress. And there's been some ups, there's been some downs. But I'm still in love with the process. And the fact that y- there are downs and you can be happy made me realize that, yeah, this this is what I want to do. This is what I love. So, yeah, that's the story. Where are you looking to take it? So, obviously, you're, f- you're a very young guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess you're still in that stage of you know, establishing the, the, the gift, the talent, sharing it to the world, trying to put your name out there. Mm. In the next, I guess, not to kind of like put it on you in that way, but in the next, say, five years, five years, were you looking to take it, like, you know, in terms of the platform and your outreach, what's the goal, if there is one, or the goals? School tools, university tools, global tools. I always say this. I want to go to every school, go to every uni, and go global so that everyone can listen, everyone can hear. And that's the plan. Even speaking on that, we got our first event coming up on October the 25th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. You can go on Eventbrite, type in, it's been about time, because it's really been about that time (laughs) that we know about our gifts, we know about our purpose, and we take the practical steps to move on. So you can go on Eventbrite. The location will be announced closer to the date. We're still confirming the venue. So yeah, I would say, yeah, global university tool, school tool, everywhere. I want to take this gift and use it to the best of my ability because mm-hmm. my goal is to be the best that's ever done this, the best in history until the next generation comes and surpasses me because that's wow. legacy. Man's just here. I'm just cheesing here because <laughs> fam, he's, he's, he's come from bed. what book is he? Yeah, I'm like, he's, he's <laughs> come from bed. But you know what? I'm just here cheesing because I'm just like, man, I mean, I'm mixed because I'm just like, I'm loving hearing this. And for me, it's the A. I'm like, this guy's young. Because I think about it, I'm just like, when I was 17, this was what, college times. Mm. Mackie D's, Sainsbury's, yeah, Donuts, Lemonade, <laughs> EMA, <laughs> Chasing Gal. I wasn't on this thing. Air Force Ones, the black Ch- ones. If you came up to me and you were like, bro, I'm thinking about Every getting month. a... You know what I mean? It was mm. a different mindset. And for me, I'm just like, you are way ahead. For me, it's just, it's still, it's inspiring to see. And I think that's what I appreciate about it is that you come and you kind of give that energy and that value. And you're like, look, there's more to life. You can transform your life. If you take certain steps, you can do so much with what you want to do and where you are, where you want to be. Like you're here at 17 talking about global events. I don't know a lot of 17-year-old people, 18-year-old people in general who even have that level of thought, that level of um, future sight. And boy, this guy's levels, man. One question, though. Come on. Um, I guess a lot of the stuff that you say, is this all just naturally coming from you or is it stuff that you've learned from other people, books or like online material? Like how do you, because there's also this process of you're going to elevate, you're going to grow. Mm-hmm. And there's one of my favorite books is Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm-hmm. One of the key habits is sharpening the saw as you go on. Mm-hmm. So you've got this talent you got this gift but there's also the necessary need for you to educate yourself and grow and develop so what do you do to help you in terms of your growth what do i do um listen this is gonna sound weird but i listen to like everyone listen to their what they've been through listen to how they are and even people my age like i just sit down and listen and take it in Mm. and then just by listening just by hearing what they're going through i learn a lot and by listening to podcasts, listening to speeches, listening to sermons, and yeah, that's it really. And maybe a few books. I'm not really a reader. I'm trying to be a reader, but like, mm. 
it's, mm. it's kind of hard for me to, <laughs> but I'll be a reader. But it's like, it's mainly by listening. That's my main thing that I learned by, just by listening, watching, analyzing, and yeah, listening is a powerful tool. Just That's sometimes you need to sit down, just listen to what people are saying, listen to what they're going through. Cause it's like, I listen to what they're saying and it's like, I can feel their pain. Mm. So through that, I'm like, yeah, let me make a speech for that type of person. Yeah, let me okay. make a speech for that type of person. To let you know, yeah, there's a way out of it, definitely. So what, looking back on, like, let's say this month, mm. through listening, what's one of the biggest things that you've discovered or learned about? Timing. I've learned that a lot, of, a lot of young people know about how much time we actually don't have, Ooh. how much time we don't have left. Like, as young people, we feel like, oh, we've got all the time in the world. Yeah, right. But I came to the realisation now that's not the case. Because time is the most cheapest thing in the world and the most expensive thing in the world. It's the cheapest because anyone can waste it. Like mm. I could be sitting here, I could waste your time, I could waste your I could waste your time just by trying <laughs> rubbish. Oh, and it's the most expensive thing in the world because you'll never ever get it back. I'm telling you. Once it's gone, you'll never get it back. Like look. Those five seconds just passed by. <laughs> you're not getting those Man's five doing experiments back. on the bike. He's like, what, what happened? <laughs> Did it stop? Can so, I get that back? <laughs> no, time's done. Like, those that seconds, yeah, you never get it back. But then I realised not all the young people know this. Not every young person knows about getting a mental. Not every young person knows about um, getting LinkedIn. Not every young person knows about going to events. And then when I realised that, the bar is actually very, very low. Like, mm. it's very, very low. I was like, yeah, you know what? We need to talk about timing. We need to talk about movement, movement. Like, that's my theme for this month. Movement is a must. There's always a must. Mm. We've got to move. Like, mm. we just got to move. Progression is better than degression. It's better to make slow, slow motion is better than no motion. Because at least with slow motion, you get to the end. No motion, you're not going nowhere. You're not mm. getting nowhere. So that's really the theme for this month and next month even. Timing, timing. Just I'm loving that. It. I'm loving that. On that timing, and you mentioned that when man did the little pause and then the importance <laughs> of time being cheap <laughs> and stuff. But you know, it's so important because I remember I was at an event and then this guy was on stage and he, he basically spent a year in prison mm. and then he came out and then, you know, some guys are like, yeah, whatever. But then he was like, after a couple months that he realised how important time was because it wasn't until that point he was like, a whole year of my life was gone. And he was like, he kind of felt like his life was on pause. Mm. Like for that whole year, really and truly, n nothing happened. Behind bars, eat, sleep, gym, repeat. Nothing really happened. And then he just went on to speak about how important and valuable time is. And mm. I'm so glad that you recognized and you mentioned it because, again, I, I'm reading a book now. It's funny, it's a finance book where the guy speaks about how he wanted to escape the rat race mm. for time. And he speaks about how the, as the older, the older you get, the more you realize the importance of time and safeguarding that. Because there's a kind of like um, this diagram of resources. Mm. And on one end, you have time, you have reputation, you have money, you have energy. And the further along you go towards the left, the less likely you are to or the harder it is to replenish those resources mm. so with energy you go to the gym you work out you get tired you eat you sleep you wake up you're good you can go again mm. um, money you work you work you get paid you pay your bills you enjoy cool money goes but then you get paid again mm. um, reputation depending on what's happened once it's been damaged it can be repaired but it is really difficult Very. and it doesn't always go back to 100 percent. just touching on reputation like mm. You need to guard your reputation with your life. I'm telling you. Because that is what precedes your step. Like yes. Reputation gets you in the mouth of door openers. Mm. Reputation gets you in the mouth of people that you wouldn't even know. Like Simply because of your reputation, someone will seek after you and someone will find you. So don't damage your reputation. Even yes. Solomon says it, one of the wisest men in history in Proverbs. Guard your reputation. Because a lot of young people don't understand the principle of guarding your reputation. And even people in general, they don't understand that their reputation is important. Mm. So important. Don't damage it, guys. Don't <laughs> damage your reputation. Tell them. It's not a joke. Tell it's them. never a joke. Precisely. And yet on that reputation was then sort of second, but then the furthest and the most important being time. Because mm. once, like you said, once time is gone, 
That's it. You're not going to be 15 again. You're not going to be 18 again. You can use whatever cream to look as young as you want. But that, <laughs> no, the time is gone. Once the time so is gone, and I think it. it's just emphasising the importance <laughs> of, you know, f- you know, seeking value. So that you spoke about values, mm. making sure that your time is spent on valuable things that will make you better. Is what you're doing growing you? Is it going to help you? Is it going to help others? You know, what value can you bring? And I think that's something that needs to be touched on as well because we live in a world where I feel like people are very consumer-esque, meaning that they want, they mm. consume TV food movies games they want to be entertained they want to receive and get but people don't always take the time to think about giving mm. you doing your speaking that's you're giving you're imparting knowledge words um certain emotions and i think it's important for people to once in a while to think about that aspect so you mentioned the um seven habits it's in that one that where towards the end they speak about you're on your deathbed right uh Is that one what, yeah. 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 So obviously that with with that, and it kind of touched on what Carl spoke about and what you've mentioned in that reputation. Mm. If you were to be in a coma, if someone obviously God forbid someone's in a coma, if someone's on their deathbed, if someone's died, apart from your close friends and family, who to be fair, they kind of have to be there. Who's who's coming? Mm. And it doesn't have to be a hundred thousand people. Mm. That's not always going to be the case. But the people that do come, what are they saying about you? What is your legacy? What 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 you know? What is your energy? What's your reputation? Mm. What did this person do for society and their environment and those others? Again, you don't have to give a million pounds to ten million charities, but what are people saying about you? Is it pleasant things? He was a very nice guy. When I was down, he was there. This guy gave so much, or this this lady did so much for our community and for black men. Mm. And I think it's just important to think about these aspects and. Again, it all falls back to that kind of level of self-awareness, just being aware of who you are, mm. what you're about, your values, what you care about, where you see yourself in your future and what you want to do to to give back. But I'm glad you kind of touched on reputation because it is really important. But Very I important. do feel like your reputation is key and there are stories of people who are able to pull it back. But if you can protect it, don't damage it. Yeah. But I feel like when you're young, you're, yeah. you're bound to make mistakes. Yeah. Like... Uh, I'm trying to think in a way that I've kind of messed up my reputation. I took one job in in London when I first graduated from London, um, university, and deep down I knew I was only going to be there for one month. But I still showed up because I wanted peace. Mm-hmm. But my reputation in that company might not be that great. Mm. Yeah. But I'm willing to live with that. You know, if if you do damage your reputation, be comfortable enough to understand the consequences that may come from it. Mm. I think that's important to know. But Again, time is one of those things Oof. that is so precious. Tell them, bro. And yes. you have to guard time. Yeah. If out of all of that, I get reputation, but the most important one is time. And how do you spend that time? Who do you yeah. spend time you, your time with? And what are you consuming? What's taking your time? Because you mentioned it at the start about what that transformation is all about. What are you consuming? If you're consuming trash, 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 and your circle is a bit trash as well, then how are you going to step out of that and, you know, come out of your recycling bin and be clean, you know? Mm. So, like, I think those are the kind of areas that, in order for someone to transform, there is that element of taking in that information, but also being aware of your environment that you stand in. Yeah. You know, the friends, the people you surround yourself with, the the material you're taking in, because those all play key parts. Yeah, touching on that, in fact. It's like, let me put into perspective, you have a rose, that rose has the potential to bloom and blossom into a beautiful flower. But if it's surrounded by thorns, it will grow, but then it will stop and become a part of the thorns and die. Mm. That's the same thing with your friends. Like You need to take a moment, step back and think, are your friends thorns? <laughs> do they hold you down? Damn. Do they pierce? Because if they do, they will limit your growth. Mm. Whereas if that rose was around other roses, all they'll do is blossom together. Flourish. They'll be shining together. So you need to start thinking, like, who are your friends? And even touching on the reputation aspect, one, some person told me this before at some event, and it stuck with me for life. He said, because you're young, you can make mistakes, and no one will say anything. Mm. But because I'm old, I'm 30, I can't make those mistakes. Mm. So then I used that to my advantage. I was like, I'm 17. I can actually make some mistakes and it's okay mm. because I'm still young. You still have to use the fact that you're young to an advantage. Mm. So it's like, okay, if we make a mistake, that's fine. We just rectify from it. 
And that's another thing. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, especially as young people. If you're older and you're making like big mistakes, then it's a bit. Man, <laughs> man's like, it's a techie yeah, one still. It's, it's a techie one still. <laughs> <laughs> but you can bounce back. But if you're young and you're making mistakes, don't don't feel like you fail. Don't feel like nothing. Because we can make mistakes. We're young enough to make those mistakes. It's through making those mistakes that now you know what to do next. Lessons. And through mm. every mistake, yeah, you learn lessons through every mistake. Every mistake I've made, every wrongdoing I've done, it's taught me a lesson. So the only way I can go is up. Mm. Yes. So I'm just pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing up. And that's the goal. All right, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick it on you now. So obviously you... <laughs> I love how you spoke about roses and fawns, mm. um, friendship, that sort of thing. If, say, obviously, fair enough, you are relatively young, you've got your boys. Say one of your boys is bummy. Mm. He's just a bum. He's negative. Mm. He's like, why are you doing events? They ain't going to listen to you. You're young. He's not on job. He's not thinking about college, university, mm. whatever. So he's a fawn. He's a fawn to, to your roles, yeah? How do you, how do you handle that? Are you going to just cut man off? Or are you going to try and speak to him, even if he's not hearing it? How do you deal with that? So I would chat to him, understand where he's coming from. But the main thing I would say is don't cut no one off because you could be the breakthrough in their life. So I will always say love from a distance. So if that was my friend, then I will just take a step back. And I have to love from a distance. You can't be as close as he was before, <laughs> but you're close enough to reach out to me. So that when you're switched on, when you clock what I've been doing and you see it, I'll be at a stage where I can just stretch out my hand and pull you up with me. I can set you up with opportunities, open doors for you. And that's it. Like none of my friends, I don't cut no one off. I just love from a distance. So when they're ready to step up, when they're ready to level up, I'm always there. I'm here for you and I help. So I that's what I levels, say. man. That's levels. I rate that no, I rate that because I think I hear a lot of people just saying, yeah, I'll cut them off, innit? No. Average them off, I'll cut them off, I ain't having it. But I think, and it's interesting because that's something that I've definitely done over the years is that this guy's my boy. I've mm. known him for 10, 15, 20 years. Mm. I'm not going to cut him off just because he doesn't read four books a month like I do. Mm. It's not It's not that. The friendship is still good. It's still there. However, in terms of career, progression and life, this person's a bit negative. Yeah. You know, when I tell them my dreams, they're telling me why I can't do it as opposed to showing me how I can, as opposed to sharing contacts. And so I've just learned to just be a bit more distant in that regard where I might not necessarily tell them the dreams and aspirations and what I want to achieve, mm. but it's love. It's yeah. love from a distance. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, you sort of recognize that and you display that in your life, man. It's, it's powerful stuff, man. Um, another thing I wanted to say, so some of our listeners, people are listening in, going, yeah, this is a good episode. Um, I'm feeling a little demotivated. I'm feeling a little, a little, no, no, let me not say demotivated. I'm feeling a little, <laughs> a little down. Mm. Um, I want to be transformed. If you had to speak to them for say, I don't know, minute, minute and a half, maybe 30 mm -hmm. seconds, can you give them a little transformation? <laughs> People are listening going, this guy's talking, yeah, he's got he's got them quotes, but they want to see they want to like hear it in action. Can you give us a little so pretend you're on stage, mm. got the microphone, and everyone's there. It's yeah. Like a first aid kit. Come on, first <laughs> aid, aid kit. Out, they're like, hey, we need help right now. Come on. Like mm. what what give us a little a little satin satin. So if someone was across me now, yeah. while I'm on stage and they'd be more of a it's your freestyle. Or like they don't feel value, they don't feel some type of way. Mm. I'll be like, Who do you think you are? Wait for their reply. Ask them again, who do you think you are? Because what you think you are is how someone will treat you. The way you value yourself would dictate how I will value you. Because people know how to value people. Mm. We know how to value Elizabeth. We know how to value President Obama. But it's because of the value that they display that we value them. So it's like, who do, you, you mm. who do you think you are? Got a clip. Do you see yourself the way that God sees you? Do you see yourself as a diamond? Do you see yourself as a gem? And when you come to that realization, you need to understand that you are in this world and there is something that only you can do. There are 8 billion people in this world and there's only one you. Do you know how rare you are? Sometimes people don't understand how unique you are, how rare you are. Out of everybody in this world, no one has your face. Even your twin, a twin, they don't have your face. Mm -hmm. They don't walk like you do. They don't talk like you do. They don't think like you do. 
So you need to understand the value that you have and understand that you are on this earth for a purpose. A purpose that only you can fulfill. I can't fulfill that purpose. They can't fulfill that purpose. Only you can fulfill that purpose. And it's okay to feel down. It's okay to feel like I don't got it together. It's okay to be like, ah, I'm not motivated today. Or let me see, I'm not at my A game today. But the question is, what are you going to do about it? Because you can have off days, but then you need to have your on days. Mm -hmm. You can have days where like, ah, I don't feel like doing this today. But then you need to realize that you having an off day will affect other people in this world. Mm -hmm. You taking an off day will affect the next man next to you. Like, for an example, if I took an off day, imagine all those people that wouldn't hear what needs to be said. Mm. Imagine all those people that wouldn't hear what would change their life. And you need to come to the understanding that you have that type of power and you have that type of influence. And you need to switch from the fact that you're doing this for you and the fact that you're doing this for others. This is a service that you're doing. You're not doing this for yourself. You're doing this to impact and change other people's lives. Mm. So put others before yourself. And when you put others before you put yourself, you realize that you're going to work harder. Like, let me put into perspective, my mum or your mum, if you see your mum is struggling and you're tired, you're going to get out of bed and help her. Why? Because you see that she's struggling, so you're going to put her before you. So everything that you have, you just dash it to the side and you focus on her because she is the main issue. She is the main reason why you're going to get up. So if she's struggling, you're going to get up and help her. That's the same predicament that you should see with your service, with your gift, with what you're doing. You need to put others before you put yourself, and you need to help them. So that's what I'll tell the person across me if they're not feeling some type of way. Jeez. Yeah, but I'm transformed. <laughs> <laughs> transformed. I love, hey. I love that. My that's my a powerful name. message because as I kind of step into like more networking and meeting people who kind of establish themselves, one of the biggest things that they tell me is, you know, doing justice for other people. You know, I've created this amazing thing, but it, it wasn't about the money. Mm. It was the value. Yeah. It was about transforming people's lives. It was providing something for others. Yeah. And I think once you put that into your mindset, and that's something that I'm slowly trying to understand, like the podcast is definitely one of those things, mm -hmm. but do I live and breathe it every single day? Yeah. And until I get to that stage, I won't fully understand the true benefit that comes from it. So like, the example you were saying about if I hear my mom coming through the house and she's struggling, I'm getting up. I yeah. might have one mm -hmm. sock on, boxers, whatever. <laughs> That's <shin> down. <laughs> I'm getting yeah. up. And the same thing happened with like Kobe Bryant. You guys watch basketball? No, not really. No. Yeah, I don't really watch basketball either. <laughs> <laughs> I just listen. So it's like I think he tore his Achilles or like he tore his like. Something in his foot. The basketball players don't get out of me. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Who is this guy that you put on? <laughs> Who is this <laughs> brush? <laughs> so yeah, he tore his Achilles. Yeah, and then we came to find out that when you tore your Achilles, you shouldn't be able to walk. You shouldn't even be able to get up. This guy tore it, got up, scored a free throw, and then went off. And then he said, the reason why I was able to do that is because I put the game before myself. Mm. The so the pain yeah, subsided yeah. to his game. So he neglected the pain and put the game ahead. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with your service. You need to neglect yourself and put people ahead. And when you do that, you gain some new strength, some new power that you never knew you had. So yeah. Transform. Transformers. Transformers. Ah, <laughs> 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 Oi. Nah, that's a powerful, that is one for me to take. That's, you know what, you just transform me in that. That's my action right He's there. doing his job. Yeah. Doing to his to job. start putting that into perspective in everyday life because I've been in this whole, I've got to build, I've got to, you know, secure myself financially to then aid other people, make sure mummy's is all cool and everything like that. But I can transform that. I can turn that around. I can change that, change that right now. So yeah. that is a powerful action step. For you myself. don't need to wait for the money. You don't need to wait for the age. You can start now start now like you can start helping other people now start transforming other people's lives now because even with transformational speaking when i say i'm 17 some people will look at me and be like you're 17 what have you gone through mm. but then others will look at me and be like 17 wow what you're saying is powerful so it's like you need to put age aside put everything yeah. aside and just move it's better to start now than to start later because when you start now you'll be ahead of the game but when you start later 
just be like everyone else. Mm, like the crowd. Mm. As you're saying, everyone's man. unique. Everyone's got their own value. Everyone mm. kind of special in their own little way. You know, yeah. and it's just when once you harness that, and like you said, you discovered. I think you discovering your gift so early has put you at such an advantage. Yeah. Because a lot of people are still trying to figure out what their gift is. Mm. You know, big age, 47 and whatever, they'd be like, oh, I don't know what my gift is. And I think, you know, when you tie that along with they've got a life, they've got family, they've got kids, they've got responsibility, a lot of people are kind of a bit scared to make that that leap because mm. they know what's mm. at risk. Mm. But at the same time, I'm definitely a person that believes that your gift will come to you at the right time. Definitely. So even if you're at that stage, and if it hits you at 45, 47... Yeah, you still got to move. Don't use it <laughs> yeah. as an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. This is not just a young person thing. This is an old people thing. You're 50, go move. <laughs> you're 60, go and move. Don't use your age. Ah, oh, I'm too old now. I've got children. You have to move. Because you need to understand, people need you to move and impact their lives. Mm. So you need to put that aside and move. It's just better to know your gifts and value, know your gifts, sorry, at a younger age, because it's quicker. But if it takes you 40 years to know, then it takes you 40 years to know. Mm. You've got to move. If it takes you 50 years to know, then it takes you 50 years to know. Don't compare yourself to anyone else, because what you need to do is different from what I need to do. What you need to know is different from what I need to know. It could have taken you 40 years to get your gift, but when you get your gift, you'll be on a different level. You You're ready. Mm. Yeah, you've you've grown. You've greatest. gone through so much. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, don't use your age as an excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old or young, regardless, nothing is an excuse. Trust me. Everyone's got their chance. Everyone's got their time. Mm. It's just about taking opportunities, right? Yeah, definitely. Because I think going back to when you were saying about you don't cut off people, you love from a distance, but you're always going to be available to them when the time is right. Yeah. Mm. You know, if they do discover that, oh, you know what, I need to transform, and you're a guy that's, you know, out there doing your stuff and you're able to help them, mm. they might see that opportunity and, you know, voice and be like, you know what, where's your hand? I need a helping hand. Mm. And mm. that's yeah. perfect. And it's that understanding that everyone is living their own different life and yeah. all this expectation, you should be here by this age, oh, no, no, 25, no, 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 no. 30, this, no, married, and four they kids. They even do this expectation things. They haven't even met it themselves. Yeah, they just say it because they knew they can never do it, so they <laughs> yeah. want you to do it. Yeah, I'm, not trying to be <laughs> I'm 25, I have to be married. I'm 30. What kid. was you doing at 25? Huh? Yeah. huh? <laughs> yeah. it's your Stick it back life. on them. Yeah, I would say make objectives. If you want to make objectives, oh, 25, you want to worry, da, 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 go and do it, but don't make it an expectation that if you don't do it, you failed because mm. you haven't failed. So, yeah. No, I love that. Um, I guess before we end, are there any sort of final points you want to share with people listening? Um, any sort of final transformational statements? Or things <laughs> just, things you, no, things you just want to share. Mm, I would say the key thing that I want everyone to understand is treat everyone with, with respect. Treat everyone with value. Treat everyone the way you treat Queen Elizabeth, the way you treat your mum, the way you treat your dad. Because you never know who that who that person might be in the future. You never know who someone might be in the future. So I always say this: don't give people you don't. Everyone, not everyone needs to like you, mm -hmm. but just don't give people a reason to not like you. Mm -hmm. Don't let your personality or your character be a barrier. Character is the thing that will sustain you. Because character minus, I mean, charisma minus character equals catastrophe. <laughs> and what I mean by that is. You can have the gift, you can have the talent, you could be the guy, the girl. But if your character is not there, you're going to plummet quicker than an anchor. The character, your gift will open the door and get you in the room. Mm. But your character will sustain you in the room. So it's like, who are you? Who do you think you are? Mm. What is your character saying? How do you treat everyone behind closed doors? Because it's what you do in private that really matters. And everything in private will always be revealed in the public. You can never hide things in the private. So how you treat people, what you're doing when the camera's off, what you're doing <laughs> when lights are not on you, like how you're helping the community, how you're helping people around you, that's what really matters. That's mm -hmm. what I believe a transformational speaker is. I don't believe that, oh, I'm on Instagram, I'm videoing myself, I'm a transformational speaker, I'm on a podcast, I'm talking, I'm a transformational speaker. Transformational speakers, me going out to help someone, me going out to clean up, me going out to pick up rubbish if I see it in my house or at school. 
that's what transformation of speaking is to me and that's character stuff like that builds character like people especially like young african people they're always like oh my mom gives me chores she makes me clean she makes me cook da, 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 da. Yeah. but you need to understand that stuff like that builds character yeah. it's through cleaning through cooking through all of that that you learn how to do things yourself and even you understand and learn patience because you can't rush cleaning the plates. You can't rush cooking. Cooking forces you to take your time yeah. and be patient. That's character development. Mm-hmm. So I'll say don't neglect these little things and make sure your character is on point. Charisma minus character equals catastrophe. That's what my old mental PTL, Pastor Godlove, told me and it stuck with me for the rest of my life. So Oof. Yeah. Man, Do you want to plug your gems. socials one more time? <laughs> Where can people find you, man? You want to get, get more gems? <laughs> You can find me on Instagram at I am underscore ETS. I am underscore ETS. And you can find us on YouTube. We're going to start posting videos on YouTube. You can just type in ETS. And if you didn't hear in the beginning, we've got an event coming up on October the 25th from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Doors open at 5.30. Doors will close at 6 p.m. This event is called It's Been About Time. Okay. Because it's been about time <laughs> that we understand our gifts and our purpose. It's been about time that we move towards purpose, that we take the practical steps. And not only that, but you get the chance to network with other young kings and queens mm. and network with other young people. This is not an event. This is not an event that you want to miss. So the 25th of October, we've got to get busy. It's been about that time. I'm loving that. So got to get busy. Time. I love Anywhere that. It's been <laughs> about bones. time. No, I love that. Honestly, thank you yeah. so much for for coming and you know blessing people with your gift and your talent and just talking to us about your journey and the importance of everything um, that you're doing and just understanding someone's value, seeing themselves as queens and kings. Always. And no, we love it, man. We love it. Um, as always, everyone, thank you so much for listening in. Uh, you know what platforms you can find us on. Type in podcast on Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube. We'll give you email that info at tagmepodcast.co.uk. And that is us out for another episode. Keep it locked.